you and I were talking about this last night, yeah. but for, there's going to be a core audience of folks that listen to Virtually Speaking <laughs> that are in the NetApp world. They're going to be like, Nick's back. That's awesome. So, <laughs> right. Welcome back, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nick, uh, NetApp, lots of news going on here at VMware Explorer. I know you've been working closely with Glenn on some solutions that I want to talk about. Uh, but before we dive into that solution with VMware Cloud on AWS, tell me a little bit about what you're doing here at, uh, at Explore this week. Yeah, for Explore specifically, this is really about the convergence of two very large masses colliding uh, in the best way possible. So no, we've been spending the last five or six years at NetApp building our cloud portfolio that we kicked off in 2016. Um, and over the last three to four years specifically, we've been doing some really cool stuff that were based around acquisitions, and we've been sort of piecemealing this portfolio of products together. Now, over the last year or so, it's become its own platform. So we have Cloud Manager, and then we have the Spot Portfolio, where they're starting to become actual platforms that can deliver these managed services to people instead of having to rack and stack gear and, and do, uh, you know, and manage infrastructure. So to see uh, Ragu come out this morning, and Kit was talking about it as some as we had a lot of people talking about it today uh, during the general session. It was interesting to see how a lot of that stuff is aligning, and almost, you could almost overlay the two where you've got the back end and the front end, sort of. And I think there's going to be some really cool points where we can all connect between yeah. the two companies uh, to deliver storage managed services up to some of the more front end services that, that VMware is delivering. Yeah. Yeah, hard to agree, man. Yeah, the, 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 you and I have talked about this before, yeah. but, but in a lot of ways, the, the two strategies are, are, are mirrors of one another, just using different adverbs, but, but describing the same general customer experience. Yeah, I remember uh, 2014 Insight, you guys remember that, you were there. Um, George got up on stage and said something called Data Fabric, and we were like, "Oh yeah, what is Data Fabric? What, what even what is, is it, that? Blanket? <laughs> that sounds cute, what is that? And it's become a reality, the way that we have sort of stitched everything together across all three of the major cloud providers, um, looking into other ones as well uh, to be able to expand some of that when they're ready. Uh, I'll say that out there. Um, but the, the idea that we can do any of the things that we do, and I'm seeing the same, if, uh, same, same things coming from VMware, uh, uh, do any of the things that we do uh, can be done across any of the three cloud providers. Yeah, absolutely. Delivering all of those services managed to any of them in the respective services is a really big deal for customers. And then bringing the stuff in with the new versions of vSphere, so I'm excited to see what Aria can do oh, yeah. um, as far as that overlay and being able to bring that true multi-cloud experience together. Man, we are perfectly aligned as two companies as to exactly how we want to deliver that stuff. Yeah, yeah for sure. Man, Net so NetApp's been one of the most valued partners at VMware for years. Decades. Uh, yeah, yeah. 2002, guys. I think, we was the first thing that we collaborated together on. Yeah, and, and uh, I think a while back you guys collaborated on virtual volumes. And uh, oh, yeah. you, you were one of the very first uh, folks to, to join in the, the VVOLs kick for, for VMware. And I heard recently, I think recently is today, you guys were making some sort of announcement on uh, one of your larger partners that are being supporting for VVOLs. Are you, are you aware of that or, or is that still hush hush? Um, I heard there was an announcement of a customer that was going to do that, but I believe that was your announcement to make, not ours. Oh, I'm okay. not 100% sure, so I'm not going to say anything. But. We're going to call that one hush hush. We're yeah. going to call that hush hush, yeah. <laughs> but there's really good news around There was a VVOLs. very large multi petabyte installation that's out there that I'm not yes. sure that we can name publicly. All right, so we're going we're gonna to back on that yeah. one, but we're going to say there's good news coming in that regard. Yeah. yeah. What I do want to talk about, though, is uh, VMware Cloud on AWS. Uh, Glenn has been, you know, he's, he works in product management over there at VMware Cloud on AWS, and there have been some really cool solutions coming out of there, one of which is uh, CloudFlex Storage, uh, which is VMware's offering uh, for, for NFS. Uh, and then there's one that you've been working with, with uh, Nick on. Tell us about it. Yeah, so the, the, the core platform enhancement that, that, that I've been building is, is bringing disaggregated storage into VMware Cloud and AWS. So this is the ability to, uh, it, you know, traditionally we use HCI, vSAN, NSX, vSphere, right? Whenever you get a server, you get all three of those. Uh, moving forward, we're introducing the ability for a customer to, to purchase storage asymmetric from their compute in memory. So when your storage requirements outstep your, your, your compute requirements, you know, instead of having to purchase additional hosts just to store your, your data, you'll be able to right size those deployments and, and, and control your costs and get access to the, the enhanced capabilities that these platforms can support. As you mentioned, we had two design partners. We had an internal design partner in the, the 
uh, VMware Cloud DR VMC Flex Storage team, and then we worked very extensively with with NetApp and AWS on on their exciting FSx for NetApp ONTAP product. Uh, honestly, if you take a step back and look at it, you know, the, at a high level, although we don't talk about it this way, but at a high level, the, it's, it's almost like there's a native VMware managed thing where it, we just, it's a single button, you don't think about it, we do it all for you. Um, and then there's a customer managed aspect where you get full access to everything, right? And, and honestly, from a, a strategy level, we took a look at this for a very long time and we're like, okay, so what should we do? And the more customers we talked to, the more data we looked at, the more it became, this wasn't an or, it's an and. We need to support both of these use cases oh, yeah. in, in a full-fledged manner. Um, and, and honestly, I look at, at what we announced uh, today and, and the initial GA offer, the, the capabilities that the customers get, uh, particularly with FSX uh, for NetApp on tap in conjunction with VMware Cloud and AWS. You know, this is just the beginning, but, but it's already completely changed the game. Like, like William said it this morning on stage, right? Uh, if, if you think that your workload's too big for us, uh, try again, Yeah. right? Like we're ready for everything at this point. I love it. There's a very large, maybe the largest financial institution in the world that just certified it Dev Gold. Oh, wow. So that meaning that it's ready for production. So if they can do it, everybody else can too. Um, the other thing I'll say about FSX ONTAP to add on what Glenn was saying was this has been a, a sort of exercise in a Goldilocks sort of thing for us over the last six years. So we started out in AWS with cloud volume service. Right. And that was basically we were putting A700 arrays into Equinix next door cross connect and then delivering it through BGP up to your VPCs. And then we were like, well, okay, that works. Let's do it in GCP too. But hey, they wanted to do it a little bit different. So we're going to build it natively into the, um, the partner solutions at the bottom left of GCP. So, okay, that's one more step. It makes it easier, more transparent for the user to get to it. Microsoft showed up and went, meh. We got a better idea. Why don't we just put the arrays directly into our regional data centers instead of the partners, and we'll just wire it directly up to the fabric interconnects in the Azure regional data center. Yeah. Boom, Wow. Azure NetApp files. So then we got to FSX ONTAP. They didn't want to mess with anything hardware. They wanted to completely run all the hardware, and I'm not even allowed to talk about the advanced hardware that it runs on behind the scenes. I promise you it's strong enough. I promise you it's plenty strong enough to run uh, uh, ONTAP. And what you're getting out of that is not having to manage a single disk, not having to manage a single storage array, controller, driver update, ONTAP update, none of that stuff. You're getting delivered volumes and export paths that you can just mount to your workloads, period. And period, hard stop, as yeah, Mr. Period. Size yeah. used to say. Yeah, look, it, it, I, I really love the combination of the two because yeah. they, they, they match up from a managed perspective, right? From a customer aspect perspective, right? Uh, Amazon is, is fully managing the FSX lifecycle. So yeah. for, once you click deploy and the instance comes online, from that point on, you never think about upgrades, you never think about hardware failure, you never think about, the only thing you own is the configuration. Yep. Right, what are your SVMs? What do you want to call your volumes? What protocols are you using? And, and that is exactly how VMware Cloud works, yep. right? You say, I want an SDDC, two hours later, vSphere's fully up and running. You never upgrade it, you never think about it. If something breaks, you just call someone and yell at them, they fix it for you. The only thing you do is just manage your configuration. These are my VMs. And, and, and because these two services can now coexist, Right, it really enables us to move the needle from a customer managed perspective and, and just what we're asking them to do. Like to, to your point, like the days of the artisan admin racking and stacking and lovingly <laughs> separating power from ethernet so that we don't have crosstalk, like yeah. those days are so gone, it's not even funny. There was an episode of the formerly known as NetApp Communities podcast that we do where we interviewed the current uh, NetApp CTO, Jay Kidd. And he referred to me as an infrastructure dinosaur. Do you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. have wholly embraced that because <laughs> I am that. And I think to a certain extent, a lot of people that have been doing this for 10 plus years, 10 to 15 years, are kind of in that camp. And we're having to retrain, reskill, reshape the way that we think about things. What did Raghu open the keynote with this morning? He didn't come out talking about vSphere or vSAN or anything else. Developer experience. Yes. Yeah. And I think that is just foundational in the way that we've got to approach this stuff going forward. Uh, I'll give you a concrete example. I've got a demo video on my YouTube channel of me with a about 10 lines of YAML that I can put in CloudFormation in AWS and it spins up an ONTAP array. And I walk away and I go get a sandwich and I come back in half an hour and it's there. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Like the days of racking, like the artisan days, yeah. right? We built careers on that kind we of stuff, did, right? Yeah. So the, the fact that that's gone now is, oh, I've got all this time to do some other cool stuff exactly. now. Yeah. yeah. 
that's where the developers and the apps and the workloads, the more you get the infrastructure out of the way, the more time they have to build cool stuff. Absolutely, and so you know, for, for NetApp customers that are aware, obviously, they've, they've always known and, and felt good about having the snappy things and the flex clones and all those great data services yeah. that NetApp has just been known for for years. So if somebody comes in, they're not a NetApp customer, and they're, do they have to be a NetApp customer to enjoy all this for FSX on tap, or is this? Absolutely not, and one of my favorite stories to tell is uh, a very large manufacturing company fell over their heels backwards and stumbled into FSX. They had never heard the word NetApp. They had never heard the word on tap. They were a full, um, <clears throat> your former three-letter overlords shop. <laughs> um, and they for, heard about it. They saw FSX. They saw FSX on tap. And they are now an on-prem customer because of what FSX ONTAP enabled them to do, huh. and then enabled them. So they, we completely flipped someone that had never heard about NetApp or ONTAP to now they have a very large footprint on-prem in order to facilitate snap mirrors and moves between it yeah. to work in AWS. So anything is possible. That's one that caught me out of left field. I didn't see that one coming. Um, I, I, I think we're going to see that more, though, as we see more and more companies go in, especially born in the cloud type companies that haven't ever really worked with an infrastructure before or run data centers. I think we're going to see that more. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the part of this life cycle that I find super interesting, right? right? Because the whole, the, we've known for years now that, right, like the, the, if you really want to maximize this, you use a little bit of everything because everything has an advantage, right? Clouds are great places to go try new things. Right, it's, just, it's, yeah. it's the best place to do new. Yep. Oh, yeah. But but once you're dealing with something that's steady state, long running, super predictable, colos and managed offers tend to be a better, more affordable, long term option. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It it, it definitely depends. Um, but but in in uh, this instance, right, by by reducing what you're asking the customer to actually think about, yeah, it just makes that so much easier for them to be successful. Right, you're reducing the amount of, of problem space that they have to man, you know, wrap their hands around and manage. And as a result, they can find success. So to your point, right? Like, oh, we spun this thing up in the cloud. We, we had no experience with it. Oh crap, this works great. Can we get one of these for on-premises? You know, it's, it's, I can isolate it into yeah. like SVMs and completely isolate dev and QA and yeah. production and all this and manage what gets amount of permissions and IAM roles, everything still works. Oh my God, we have different capacity tiers and performance tiers. This is so easy, why don't we? That's what happens. Yeah. You get in and it becomes a little bit infectious and you start getting, I don't want to say addicted, but it's really easy to get addicted to all of the flex and snap words you were because of the time, that the lack of time that it takes to in order to leverage some of that functionality. Yeah, and we've come full circle. You know, we went from being complex to to, to really just focusing on the actual services, uh, like like Raghu said. And I I really think that NetApp is just hitting it over the fence with this. And I'm really glad that we're partnering with you guys on this solution. Yay! Yes, very good. <laughs> Nick Howell, man, personally, and Glenn, it is so good to to be in the front of a microphone with you guys once again. I want to. Uh, we need to do it more often. I absolutely agree, man. Thanks for joining <laughs> the Virtually Speaking podcast, man, and enjoy. Thanks the rest for having of the week. me, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. All right.